Hi friends, uh, Tracy from Pet Eden here. Um, today I was going to delve into a pretty rough topic, behavioural euthanasia. Working at the vet clinic, I'm very lucky to be working with two vet behaviourists and we see a lot of behaviour issues with our animals coming into the clinic mainly dogs, some cats as well. And it strikes very close to home because my beautiful boy Opie behind me, um, that's it. He developed a lot of behavior, um, anxiety, and uh, he was on medication for a lot of his life. Um, some of that was to do with pain and that's why he was reacting. He was dog reactive. He was people reactive. He didn't like children. So it was a lot of management and it was exhausting living with a highly functional, trying to, you know, think of all the things that could possibly go wrong and manage that before it happened. Uh, sometimes it didn't happen, and but it was, yeah, physically exhausting, mentally draining, planning all these things steps that may eventuate and trying to prevent that from happening. I wanted to let everyone know that it is a valid reason for euthanasia if behaviour issues um, aren't able to be kept under control. With the power of a lot of training, dog trainers and um, vet behaviourists will put in training methods. Medication may or may not help the situation. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it, well, unfortunately, it usually comes to a head where a catastrophe event happens and then we're faced with this decision. There's no easy way to say it. So, yeah, it, it is a very heavy topic. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, solve everybody's, um, yeah, I'm not going to solve everybody's problems um, in a short little video, but I wanted to just pass on to everybody that, yes, it is, it is a real thing and um, where it's more prevalent in veterinary medicine now than it was, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um the actual definition of euthanasia is a good death. And if we can provide that to what seems like, and I'm going to do massive inverted commas here, a healthy animal. Um, Opie on the outside did look fairly healthy. Um, he did have some spinal issues, but his brain was not working properly like a normal animal should. Um, so, yeah, it's super, super hard to make a decision of euthanasia anyway, um, to physically see a healthy animal um, who appears healthy, that's running around, that's, you know, playing and they can be amazing 99% of their time and it's just that 1% where they, um, they go for another animal, um, they try to attack someone or a child. Uh, it's like one of my colleagues says, it's like a gun being in the house and um, and it going off. That, you know, the safety cap can be on. You can do all of the management. You can, you know, have it locked behind a drawer, but it's that 1% of the time where it gets into the wrong hands and something can happen and an accident happens. Uh, my heart goes out to anyone that's had to make this decision um, because it, it just, there's no other word for it. It makes you feel shit. Uh, I know a lot of my colleagues have struggled with making this decision as well and being there for our patients and for our clients. Um, yeah, it's it absolutely sucks. Um, yeah, so like I say, I'm not going to solve everyone's um, everyone's issues and problems in this one little video but um, it's more about making people aware that um, the guilt that comes with making a decision like this and 
all I can say is that, you know, you've, you've done the right thing with the information that you've got. Um, you're trying to keep everybody safe and other animals safe as well. And um, yeah, it, it, it's balls. It really sucks. Um, how you deal with that feeling of guilt it that that's again I can't explain that in in a in a short little video um but please know that yeah people might like myself would be more than happy to um to lend an ear if you needed to talk about your beloved pet and what you've been through and um a, a lot of a lot of other people can feel not so much um guilt but they can feel guilty for the relief that it brings because you're not walking on eggshells, you're not waiting for that loaded gun to go off. When when that animal has passed, the the baby gates they can come down. Um, yeah, you're not waiting for the reaction to happen when the doorbell goes or um, yeah, when the postie comes. It's a big yeah um, relief that. And you shouldn't feel guilty for having that time. I definitely felt it too. With um, when, when I lost Opie, I was waiting for the thunderstorms, the the light, the lightning, the um, the the planes that would go overhead. You're just waiting for the bark, waiting for the reaction. Um, the when my two three cats, two of them are girls, one of them's a boy, and he's a bit of a turd. Opie would keep him in line. If he was bashing up the two cats, he would step in. He would be the, you know, the bouncer. Um, waiting for those things, little things to happen. Um, I can have kids around my house now, which I wasn't able to do before because it was dangerous to have them and it wasn't fair on him. I'd have to lock him away. It, It's a whole different level of suckage. Um, yeah, it it's just awful. We also grieve um, our hopes, dreams and expectations. Uh, I was listening to a lady the other day and she said that, yeah, she bought a new baby. She was pregnant. She had the baby. Um, she did everything she could in her power. She read the books of, you know, introducing your dog to a baby, giving them the... Uh, the blankets and clothes for the dog to smell. Um, and she was absolutely forced into looking at two beautiful beings that she loved um, and she had to choose to, to put the dog to sleep because it went for the baby. I mean, how horrific, just, just shocking, like, you, you don't want that to happen. You you wouldn't in your wildest dreams, you know, bless that on anybody. What a decision to have to make. Yeah. I don't even know where I'm going with this video. I, I just wanted to let people know that it's the shittiest decision to have to make. Um, but again, it is euthanasia is a valid reason for behaviour issues, behaviour problems. Um, it's letting them go in a humane and dignified way. And it's still taboo to talk about. So, yeah, I think finding uh, finding someone that you can talk to, again, whether it's a pet loss counsellor or really close friends and family that understand what you've been through, um, the decisions that you've had to make, how how do you choose? If you can rehome the pup, then, you know, if that's doable. But euthanasia is usually the last resort and nobody ever wants to take a life. I know the vet staff don't take this decision lightly at all. And if there was any other way of, you know, rehoming the dog, giving the dog a better chance, then they would do it over euthanasia. But unfortunately, euthanasia is, is a treatment for, for these conditions.
so yes, I, I knew it was going to be a heavy one. Um, I still suffer from PTSD when I see, you know, dogs in the waiting room that, you know, people are like, put them on a lead for God's sake. Don't let them get too close to each other because something's going to happen. Like something's going to go down. This dog's really sick. This dog wants to say hello. Give him some distance, please. Like I just don't want a fight to happen in front of me and I still am triggered by that stuff. Um, I've seen too much of it and I've experienced too much of it. And to be perfectly honest, that's one of my my reasons that I haven't got another dog yet because I'm definitely scared of going through the, all the puppy stuff, of going through a foster home thing. Um, will I get a normal dog or will I have a dog that's got behaviour issues again? Um, he was trained the best way possible and when he turned adolescence, it all went pear-shaped. Um, yeah, uh, you can do everything nurture and nature. We can do everything right, um, but still dogs, you know, if their brains aren't working properly. Um, with people, we have mental health uh, facilities. Um, there's there's places that we can go. There's medication that we can take. We can talk to a professional. Dogs can't do that. Dogs can't tell us why they're anxious. Dogs can't tell us if they're depressed. And we have to do a lot of reading of their body language and yeah, it's, it's intense. Yes. So I don't really know how to end this call um, apart from saying that uh, please know that you are supported in your decision. Um, there's no judgment here by any means. If anything, I would support you in your decision. Um yeah, we, we've got to keep everybody safe and that means our animals as well. So, yeah, my my boy wasn't living the best life that he could with the little defective brain that he had. No matter, matter of medication was going to help that. Um, yeah, so please know um, I'm sending a lot of love and light your way and if you need to reach out, by all means, um, send me a text, uh, send an email, give us a call. Um, yeah, if if you if you think that having a support group would help, then um, by all means, pop pop some comments below, and um, and we can see if we can arrange that. So thanks everyone. Sorry it was a heavy topic, and um, yep, sending lots of love and light to you and your pets.